Just briefly, this project, because of the size of it, is going through Article 80 large project review through the Boston Redevelopment Authority. Part of that process is to come out and have a BRA sponsored meeting with the community to get your feedback and answer any questions or concerns you might have. Um, tonight, Heather Campasano from the BRA is also with me, as, as well as Nicole Leo from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. So, at this point, I'll turn it over to Yanni Sipis. He can um, show you the project. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. My name is Yanni Sipis. I dress like a lawyer, I'm not a lawyer, so don't worry. Um, I'm the firm of Collier's Meredith and Bruin. I'm the design and construction project manager for the North Bennett Street School. Um, and I might ask, actually, would you mind doing the, uh, the panel of the work with the PowerPoint there? Um, and I'll give you a very brief overview of the project, and I'll also ask Miguel uh, to say a few words. I'm sure you all know Miguel. If we could go to the first slide there. I'm going to make this very official. Um, as far as an agenda, we'll do some brief introductions. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the school, some background on the North Bennett Street School, Mark Wyatt. Um, uh, introduce the development team, talk about the site, the proposed project's design, uh, a little bit about historic preservation, which is an important part of the proposed project, and the project schedule. We could, and can people see this, or should we shut the lights in this half of the room off so we have better? Okay, I'll do that. So that way, I'm going to be out of the seat. Good thing. Right. Um, I might ask Miguel Gomez Evangelist, who's the president of the school, to talk a little bit about the school before we dive into the project. Thanks, Jerry. So I'm Miguel Gomez Evangelist, the president of North Bend Street School. I've been uh, there since 2006, but I was also a student in the cabinet furniture making uh, program in 1996. So uh, and I'm the first person to leave the school who actually went to the school ever. Uh, and there have only been six. Uh, people in my position in 130 years. So there's been a, it's, it's been a longevity, uh, uh, long tenured position. So as you know, we started in 1881. We, we started with uh, a lot of social service programs and vocational training for what was then really a population mainly of immigrants, uh, with English speaking classes, citizenship classes, and vocational programs uh, during the day for kids and during the evening for the adults. By about uh, mid-1900s, mid we started to focus entirely on craft education, and by the 1980s, that's where we uh, settled. And, but most of you have probably been in, before 1980s, we had after school, we had Shaw House uh, for kids, uh, recreational programs, and so many, many people have uh, participated in our programs before the latest uh, focus exclusively on vocational training in craft. So our eight programs here are listed uh, from uh, cabinet and furniture making to violin making to carpentry. Uh, a pretty broad range of uh, programs. The common denominator is hand skills. They're all hand skills training programs. So we have at the moment over 150 full-time students and about five, uh, five to 600 part-time students that come in evenings, weekends, uh, week-long classes. About, uh, 40 full-time staff, and so what we have now, we've in the, in the early part of the later part of the 1990s and early part of the 2000s, we expanded to the point where we had to send two programs away. We have carpentry and preservation carpentry in rented space in Arlington, and we have the locksmith program in rented space in South Boston. And so what this pro, uh, project will do is allow the school to reunite in a single building. We'll be back together for the first time in over 10 years. And we'll bring back all the students and, and all the teachers uh, to the North End again. So uh, and it contributes quite a bit to the community. It's been essential for us to be here. It's, it's part of our DNA, and we can't imagine being anywhere else uh, in the North End. And I think really what we have to do <coughs> is recognize the, 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 uh, the part that the Elliott School, Elliot, John Elliott K-8 School has played, because I don't think we would be here tonight if it weren't for the uh, kind of synergy between the two schools. We brought their kids in on a grant-funded program about three years ago to teach woodworking. And since then, the principal there, Tracy Griffith, and I have been working very closely to coordinate our programs. And it was that vision between the two of us that made it seem possible that Elliott School could use our building as their expansion space 
while we move to another building in the north end. And that is, in fact, uh, going on at the moment. We have uh, made seven classrooms available to Elliott School for their use this year, and will be completely out by next year. And to make that possible, we're sort of camped out in, in the Area A Police Station on 150 North Street with two of our programs. So we're very uh, fragmented for this one transition year while we plan and build the new facility. And we'll be all back together in two, September 2013. And the Elliott School will then uh, be able to start their work on our building if, if all goes uh, all the approvals are, all goes as planned. You Thank want to take that. That sounded like an emergency. Uh, he's all set. All right. So, um, I'll he's turn, it, <laughs> turn it back to Yanni, right. and we'll go on from there. Thanks, Miguel. Uh, if we go to the next slide, you'll see uh, we'll just introduce the development team briefly. Um, obviously, the owner is the North Bennett Street School, and Miguel, uh, my firm, is the project manager, sort of designing and construction project we manager. We have an architect here. We do have an uh, architect Toronto here. Is a North End resident as well. Uh, we also we've selected a contract at Bond Brothers, so I'm sure our friends from Organized Labor will be very familiar with. It's a union project, uh, a great great contract, and a lot of work in the city of Boston uh, in legal counsel, school students, students. Uh, we'll the next slide, and I actually can I grab my laser apparatus here? Thank you. Um, I, because we're here in the north end, I'm not going to bother to go through you know, where the project site is and where North Street is and where Richmond Street is. I think everyone's very familiar. The, the one thing to point out here is that the, the uh, site that the project will be going into is two separate buildings currently. The printing building and the police station, former printing and former police station, two separate buildings. And the tunnel administration building right here is not part of the project. There's a party wall between the police station and the tunnel administration building and still owned by the state. So that's not part of our not part of our project. We flip around the view a little bit, and again, you can see the, the front piece of tunnel administration building is not part of the project, but the police station here and the uh, former printing building are both going to be uh, renovated in their entirety as part of the project. It's worth pointing out, since we're here, that these, these buildings are both built in the early 1930s. A little bit of ancient history here. This is a view from what's now the, uh, basically we're standing in the Sumner Tunnel roadway. Here's a Sumner Tunnel box. Well, it was under construction. Printing buildings under construction here in 1931. And a police station in the Tunnel Administration building was just completed. So a little bit of interesting history there for, for history buffs. Uh, here's an aerial view uh, just showing the, the, uh, the project sort of context. Obviously the greenways here, the Freedom Trail down here and over Richmond and North Street. Um, everything in orange is the project site. You see the Sumner Tunnel goes under these two wings of the old printing building. Um, and then again, a tunnel administration building is, is a separate building there. But basically the project has frontage on North Street and Richmond. Um, this is a, a sort of a convoluted view of the ground floor of the proposed project. But what we wanted to do is kind of illustrate how this is all going to work in the future. Right now, the police station, or the former police station, has its own entrance on North Street. The printing building has its own entrance on North Street. And then there's this garage structure in the middle here. And what we would like to do uh, in order to really consolidate the school's uh, programs and put the entire thing under one roof, literally and figuratively, is to combine the entrance into a single main public entrance into the garage area here, which will become a large public lobby uh, for the school. Uh, and then from that lobby, you'll be able to get stairs and an elevator up into the upper floors of both buildings. So these entrances will remain operable. We're going to keep as part of the historic preservation strategy, keep all the old stonework and the plaques and so forth that are within those entrances. But the main entrance is going to be where the garage is. Now. So here's kind of the before and after. This is a North Street elevation. You see here, the, this is the existing North Street elevation, the police station, the garage, and the printing building. Uh, and in the future condition, we're going to do a very nice uh, restoration of the facades of the police building and the printing building. And then we're going to add a small uh, glass, what we call the connector building, in between them that will enable uh, for seamless access from upper floors of each building to each other. Because, of course, none of the floors line up. It's just you know, part, of, part of the reality of these old buildings. Um, so we're going to introduce this glass connector building in between the two and sort of create one building where there were formerly two. On Richmond Street, uh, the existing condition here 
and the proposed condition are basically identical, except that we're going to do the restoration of the facade, probably going to replace the windows with historically <coughs> accurate, more energy efficient windows um, as part of that, but there's no real other exterior change to the building on uh, Richmond Street. Uh, here's the existing condition. This is, sorry, it's a little dark, but here you can see the existing garage. You get these two opaque garage doors there, uh, and here's a view from North Street looking down towards the Greenway. The, the, the only major change that we're proposing to make is on the next slide here. And what you can see is we're, we're proposing to infill two stories here with a glass, primarily a glass, what we call the connector building, uh, and also infill these existing garage door openings with glass storefront, uh, one of which will have a double set of entry doors so that the public can come into the public lobby uh, of the building at that location. There'll be some kind of a display of you know some of the handiwork and craftsmanship of the North End Street School students in the other window uh, within the garage, and then this double height space up here will become a kind of a great room for the school to have workshops and lectures and community events and so forth. And the entrance will be covered with this canopy element, which will have an underside that's that's going to be clad in some kind of kind of a warm wood to give it a little bit of a. Uh, uh, a little bit of a warmer feel, and that wood will be carried in through past this glass plane to the inside, where there will be a wood sculptural element created uh, also on the ceiling there. So it will kind of be a great room for the whole North Penn Street School community at this location, but we were very careful. We did not want to go higher than the existing buildings here, and we didn't want to compete with the existing buildings. We wanted to complement them with something that was contemporary, but that still kind of created a sense of entry and you know, gave a real nice address for the school at that location. Uh, here is a, a future view down North Street looking towards the Greenway here. And you, get, you can see the canopy just peeking out, sort of marking where the entry is uh, between the two buildings there. So something that says this is the entry and you're a little bit covered from the rain as you wait to walk in. Uh, here is a, a view of the proposed uh, construction looking into the North End. Here's the canopy here. And again, the infill here. We were also careful to set back that new glass so that you could tell that this you know, used to be two buildings. So those, both of those buildings facades are going to return in. So you'll still be able to see a couple of side windows here. So we didn't want to, again, we didn't want to compete with the old historic architecture. Next. This is just a view, like if you cut through it, a section through the proposed connector addition, just to demonstrate. This is a printing building over here. This is a police building over here. None of these floors line up, you know, which is, even the ground floors don't line up, of course. Which is, which is a problem uh, when you're trying to create a school under one roof where the you know, students can go back and forth. So we've created this, this is the connector edition here with a, uh, an elevator so that if you're on you know, the third floor of printing and you want to go down to the third floor of police, you can, you can get the elevator if you need an elevator, or there are also stairs. So this is kind of a way of knitting the two buildings together on all floors. Here's just a, an interior view of the printing building. Basically, it's going to get just sort of cleaned out and cleaned up, but not a lot of interior construction. These, you know, this is going to be doing heavy carpentry and crafts and so forth in here. There's not need for a lot of interior finishes. Um, this is a view of the courtyard uh, of the building, which will get dressed up a little bit. Basically, just a restoration of the masonry, new windows. There'll be four parking spaces in the courtyard and the loading zone. You can see there's a loading dock here, so we want to have some off-street loading. But you can drive in through that, um, the, uh, uh, the, um, sort of the, the little tunnel off Richmond Street there to access the courtyard. When we go to, um, uh, which one was first, I forget. There we go. Uh, let's talk a little bit about historic preservation because that's another very important part of the project. We're, we're gonna rehab these buildings um, in accordance with the United States Secretary of, Secretary of the Interior's standards for the rehabilitation of historic buildings. A lot of words, but basically it just means it's gonna be reviewed by the National Park Service going to make sure that our masonry restoration, uh, our replacement windows, and some of the other features that we're going to use are historically accurate. Also going to be resumed, reviewed by MHC, the Mass Historical Commission, and also BLC, the Boston Landmarks Commission. So there's going to be, there's going to be plenty of, of uh, historic preservation eyes on this project as it moves forward, which is important to us. Um, some exterior envelope repair, uh, replacement of most of the windows. We're going to keep some of the existing windows in key areas so we can sort of preserve them uh, so you'll be able to see them into the future. Um, uh, most of the key interior areas will be preserved and restored, especially around those entrances where there's some ornamental stonework that we want to preserve. Um, and then there's also a couple of sort of interesting items that are located throughout the buildings that we're going to keep and, and clean up. 
on the next slide is a few. What is these old communal wash bases here? I think there's two of those on site which we're going to clean up and you know display somewhere in the probably in the common areas, the public areas of the uh, of the facility. Just a little bit of a throwback to the old times. And then um, there's a whole series of plaques. The, the, both of these buildings were built during the administration of James Michael Curley, so there was never enough credit to go around. So every room has like a plaque in it. You know, courtesy of James Michael Curley, brought to you by James Michael Curley. So we're gonna, we're gonna, um, you know, we're gonna preserve those. It's, it's part of the building's history, and it's kind of interesting. Uh, and those will be available as well. Uh, so as far as the project summary goes, just to kind of wrap it all up, it's, it's about uh, 65,000 square feet total. Uh, it's about a 15 million dollar total development cost. As, as Casey alluded, it's, it's part of a large project review by the BRA because of its size uh, and the use. Um, as I say, it's a historic rehabilitation uh, overseen by the Park Service and Mass Historical Commission. Uh, it'll be home to the school for the next century and beyond, in all likelihood. Uh, and as, as Miguel alluded to, this is a sort of a land swap, which is going to enable the Elliott School's expansion, which is another, you know, another topic, but obviously one that's of great importance, uh, both to the community and to the North Penn Street School. Um, what's next? Timeline. Uh, we're currently in the design process. Prano is working 24-7 uh, on the design uh, and, and also the permitting sort of fall and winter of this year. Um, some of the, there's going to be some early enabling works, cleaning out some of the interior, doing a little bit of interior demolition later this fall. So you're going to start. The full construction will probably start in January, thereabouts, kind of December, January. Uh, and we hope to be open for the 2013 school year in September of 2013. And at that time, we'll have a big party Located by uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Martinetti and you know, a couple of other places there. I heard the Paninis were good. So, uh, uh, we'll have a big party for all our family and neighbors in the fall of 2013. I'm sure we'll use the sign and sheet when putting together the invite list. So make sure you sign it. You don't want to miss that one. And that's 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 it. That's a summary of the project. So we, we've tried to be brief so we could leave as much time as, as you folks wanted for questions and comments and so forth. And we'll turn the lights back on. Anybody have any questions or comments? Good to me. Just, uh, on the Richmond Street side, with the, a, you mentioned there's a, in the courtyard there's a uh, docking area right there on the bottom left. Yeah, right here. Uh, there's also one on the front, that hydraulic lift. Oh yes. Will that be? Uh, it's kind of a sore thumb. I don't know if it was. We're going to dress it up. But okay. we, do, we do need it. We're going to put a new up. skirt on it and make sure it looks right. And uh, the, and the massive good. stairs that were that big concrete block. Uh huh. I'd like to get rid of that. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know what that's doing there. Okay. Yeah, there's especially on Richmond Street because that's where trucks, for the city, but you know they they beat the you know what out of that that entire sort of first floor masonry plants there, that's all going to have to get cleaned up because it, it looks terrible. I agree. We agree. some parking places and unload them. Same with steel, we might have to leave a truck there to, uh, to put the steel in place, but uh, it'll just be every now and then. It won't be, uh, you're right, we're not doing much on the outside. I, I think what you would see as far as, you know, creating a delivery zone and so forth, anything that we can handle within the courtyard, you know, obviously a truck can't drive in there, but, but anything we can do in the courtyard, we will do. But I would anticipate that in front of the North Street, uh, elevation here. I think there are there's probably five or six, I think they're visitor spaces right there which may get taken up for the construction so that we have room for deliveries that are made off street so no one packs in the middle of the street and so forth. That, I think that's probably the most likely scenario. Is there any more news about um, the parking lot on the opposite side of North Street? No, it's owned by the state. We, we don't have any uh, involvement. It go, and and it they goes haven't with, made any noises about what they're going to do. We had a meeting because uh, our building uh, supplies their building with some utilities. So we have a meeting and uh, enough to know that 
they use it for their uh, project managers and we have nothing to do with it. So it goes with the DOT parcel. on October 16th, so if you think of something between now and then, feel free to email me and I can, I'll get back to you. Um, or there's a fax number on there, and uh, feel free to call at the time. Otherwise, thanks for coming. In, in case, if it's appropriate, you're welcome to come to the school and talk to me directly and ask me for whatever you need and uh, I'll show you what, what we're doing or whatever happens. If you want to come straight to the school, uh, you know where to find. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.